Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. First introduced in 1970, the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy has remained an integral part of Army and Air Force logistics for more than 50 years. It is known to be the largest military transport ever put into service by the United States. The 247-foot-long plane boasts a wingspan of 222 feet, and a fuselage contains a cargo compartment 19 feet wide, 13 feet high, and 121 feet long. This gives it the ability to carry a wide range of personnel and equipment, including helicopters, tanks, armored vehicles, and more. Unsurprisingly, this colossal plane weighs more than 380,000 pounds empty. However, it can also carry an additional 460,000 pounds in fuel and cargo. This necessitates a special, extremely durable type of landing gear. In total, the C-5 has five sets of landing gear. Four of these are located near the rear section of the aircraft while a single strut with four tires is situated under the nose. One of the things that makes the C-5's landing gear so unique is that the four rear struts are placed near the outside of the fuselage rather than underneath. This helps maximize stability while supporting the bulk of the aircraft during takeoff and landing. Each of these four sections has three pairs of wheels, giving the plane a total of 28 tires measuring four feet in diameter. When deployed, the struts come out sideways, then turn 45 degrees so that the tires align with the fuselage. This design is what allows them to be placed so far away from the center of the plane. When viewed up close, it's easy to see just how innovative the C-5's landing gear system really is. The engineers who designed it put a lot of effort into finding the perfect placement for each strut so as to create a stable platform for the 190-ton aircraft. However, the sideways deployment adds an extra layer of difficulty to the process, as the mechanisms controlling each strut must work perfectly in sequence. This requires a lot of maintenance and cleaning, which is typically done via the 559th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron in Macon, Georgia. Compared to the aircraft, the mechanisms controlling the landing gear are very new and incredibly advanced. This is the result of the U.S. military seeking out the best and latest technology to keep these veteran aircraft flying and landing as safely as possible. One of the global leaders is Safran Landing Systems. 
based in France, this aerospace company designs and manufactures struts, brakes, and other landing gear components for both commercial and military aircraft. One of their biggest clients is Airbus, which supplies planes to dozens of airlines worldwide. During the landing gear design process, Safran uses state-of-the-art 3D modeling and advanced engineering to ensure they're providing the best possible product. These systems allow them to perform various important tests on their designs before they even exist in physical form. But their commitment to excellence goes far beyond that. Indeed, the company also has a repair and refurbishment facility capable of restoring old landing gear to like new condition. This comprehensive process includes four steps. It starts with disassembly, where each part is broken down into its smallest components. These are cleaned thoroughly and all protective treatments are removed. The next step is inspection, using everything from laser measuring systems to the human eye. This step also includes non-destructive testing to see whether or not the components have suffered any damage. Next, the parts are remachined and refurbished to bring them back up to like new quality. The protective coatings are then reapplied, and the landing gear systems are reassembled for shipment back to the customer. But the landing gear is just one part of the equation that allows aircraft to take off and land safely. The other part is the tires, which must also be able to stand up to hundreds of tons of pressure over and over again. Another French company, Michelin, is well established as one of the leaders in global aircraft tire manufacturing. The process begins with raw materials, namely rubber, which first goes through an extrusion process to determine which sections will be used in different parts of the tire. In another part of the factory, the beading wire is being created. This series of steel cables secure the tire structure to the wheel. The next stop is the tire building machine, which involves placing strips of rubber and glue atop a rotating drum. As the drum spins, the air is carefully evacuated from the layers, resulting in a solid tire casing. The same approach is used to create what's known as the tire crown. This is just more layers of rubber, glue, and sometimes steel support wire. Once this is created, the tread rubber is applied. This thick, grooved section forms the outside of the tire and must be carefully measured to create a perfect circular seal. The crown and casing are then joined. This is done by inflating the casing while it is inside the crown. Once contact is achieved, 
the tire must be cured in a special heated press. This solidifies all the various components into a final shape. which must then be inspected to ensure it meets all necessary quality standards. Back in the United States, teams at the CMMXS, also known as the Commodities Maintenance Squadron, are responsible for maintaining and overhauling the military's landing gear and braking systems. These men and women are often shipped damaged or aged landing gear components that they need to repair, modify, or restore to like new conditions. This is accomplished using a variety of tools and techniques, including stripping and sandblasting. The 532nd is also responsible for non-destructive evaluation which utilizes many of the same techniques seen at Safran. The facility even has its own plating operation, with more than a dozen different plating options for various parts. Since grounded aircraft would be useless in the event of a conflict, the U.S. military has provided the CMMXS with some of the best equipment in the world, all of which is spread throughout a 500,000-square-foot facility. Even the most well-designed or well-maintained aircraft landing gear systems can still experience problems in the field. Unfortunately, training maintenance techs on new systems require taking an operational aircraft out of commission for days at a time. So in order to teach these men and women how to work on new or complex landing gear systems, the U.S. military created a special self-contained trainer. This one is a replica of the F-35 landing gear system. While it accurately mimics the internal and external operation of the actual jet, it is completely open, so trainees can see all the moving parts at once. This allows them to familiarize themselves with this aspect of the new plane while the pilots get a chance to fly the real thing. It also allows maintainers to isolate different components of the system, improving the overall training experience. Sometimes it simply isn't possible to get a landing gear system to a proper repair facility. In this case, on-site maintenance techs may take it upon themselves to repair the system in the field. Fortunately, many of these men and women have training in procedures like welding that can allow them to perform expedited repairs in even the most remote air bases around the world. In the end, these folks know just how important properly maintained landing gear is to the military's ongoing mission. It only takes one loose or broken component to cause a chain reaction that puts pilots, crew members, and potentially billions of dollars in cargo at risk. Fortunately, their hard work prevents such accidents every day.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.